Hello again, welcome back to Entrepreneur Finance. Today we're going to go over chapter three, where we're going to talk about starting a new venture. Uh, so we are going to step out of finance slightly to talk about um, the fundamental business proposition. Um, this is not us number oriented, but is more um, story oriented. And this is actually really, really important. Um, we are very good with numbers we find in uh, people who are interested in finance, but the story has to make sense too. And that's what we're going to focus on in this chapter. So let's get started. Here are the learning objective for chapter three. We're going to start, we're going to go from idea into a business. And we're going to introduce you some tools that helped you do that. And we're going to also talk about a few different approach and um, new business uh, formats, such as online business and social ventures. So first, we want to start when you, when you think about a business idea or when you're talking to an entrepreneur or when you're trying to think about starting a business yourself, you want to ask and answer some basic questions. First of all, who is your customer? What does the customer value? So that may seem obvious, but when you say, who is the customer? We want to be more specific. Is the customer in this neighborhood? Is the customer all over the world? Is the customer a 18 to 24 year old? Or is the customer um, someone over the age of 65? What does this customer value? Do they value the look and feel of the product? Do they value customer service? Do they value convenience? Or do they care about price and price alone? The most important question that any business venture that you need to ask is, how do we make money? And that's, that may seem simplistic, but it's actually a little bit more com complicated than that. Um, because in order for you to make money, you have to be able to deliver things that are valuable to your customer, but at the same time, at a cost that will make your business sustainable. So let's take this simple question, how do we make money in this business? If I ask you, how does a theater make business? And you say, oh, it's a movie theater. Do they make money selling movie tickets? And the answer is, Actually, no, they make money selling popcorns. And that is that may not be intuitive, but if you look at the business model, if you look at their cost structure, they the, the, the way that they make money is by selling popcorns in a movie theater. So when you study a business, you really need to understand where the money proposition comes from. And there are some business that may make you scratch your head. How do they make money? If you, if you, um, some business may even be very big and very well known, but you may say, I still don't understand their business model. And those are things that you should be concerned about. Now let's take a look at some unique form of business um, structure, and that may help you um, see which one you may want to choose when it's time for you to start your own business. The first one is called a lean startup, and this is very popular nowadays. So the key characteristic of a lean startup is that they do a lot of experimentation. So, and in doing so, they collect a lot of customer feedback. They do not have a well-finished, polished product from the get-go, but instead they iterate their business structure, whether it's a product design or a service paradigm. Um, they keep changing that based on customer feedback. So they try different things and see where the, and 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 try and to see which one of them work. So if, if you want to do a lean startup, there's something called minimal, minimum viable product. So you develop the product or the service to, to the point where it is just viable. And then you try it and you try it by taking it to the market, sharing it with the customers. So a lean startup is best fitted for environment that have a lot of unknowns 
because you can't get every you, you don't have all the information so remember going back to when we first started uh in this book that we talk about the need to make decision with imperfect information and ambiguity so lean startup is one way to um you're basically developing as you go along so we talk about the minimum viable product. The minimum viable product is, you know, develop your product or your service. So the product can be a service as well, um, just to a point where it is sufficient for your um, first target customer. So we talk about who is your customer. So you may have a primary group in mind, and then you develop a product that satisfies this primary group. And as you expand, you may need to change your product. So you're getting feedback as you expand to other customers. So you deploy your minimum variable product as soon as possible, and then you keep iterating. The advantage of a Lean Startup is that you do not need a whole lot of resources in the beginning because you are just developing this minimum viable product. The disadvantage is that once the product is out in the public's eye, a competitor can steal your idea. So that is the pros and cons of a Lean Startup. One counter to uh, against competitors stealing your idea is that you keep iterating and you keep changing so that you will always be ahead of your competitors. To develop a business, we're going we're gonna to introduce the tool of a business model canvas. This is the part, this is how you tell the story of your business. As I said, the majority of this book is going to focus on the finance, the nuts and bolts, the dollars and cents of your business. But in order for your business to be successful, you also have, it also have to make sense. The sense here is the intuitive sense. So before you even dive into the, the dollars and cents, you want to map out your business model. So you want to have a value proposition. What that means is what value do we deliver to our customers? So if you say, think about some uh, new businesses, um, meal preparation, for example. So instead of me going to the grocery store, I'll have food that is delivered to my door and I still have to cook it. So what value does the meal delivery service give to the customers? So it's convenience and time, right? So that's what they are selling. So you want to, you want to be very specific, very clear about what value you're delivering and what problems you are trying to solve or what customers are not currently getting from um, products and services now available in the marketplace. And then you want to also define what the minimum vi uh, viable product is. So those are the steps that you go through as you um, iterate through your business. So in the revenue side, you want to figure out how much you can charge your customers. How can you develop relationship with your customer? And this, are, this is very important nowadays because um, customer relationship is what will enable your business to create value. Um, you have to, when we talk about customer segment, so again, we want to um, be very specific about which customers you are targeting and that also have impact on your price point. So an example that I gave in the book, um, talk about a restaurant, a startup restaurant. So there are many restaurants. So if you just say, I just want to open up a restaurant, that will give you a huge customer segment, but at the same time, it makes it very difficult for you to stand out from your competitors. But let's say you as an entrepreneur has certain passion. Let's say your passion is the environment and you want to source your food locally. Then you want to identify customers that share the same value that you do. And you might be able to have a high, to charge a higher price even though your product has a higher cost. So that is, you need to match your values and what 
what you're delivering to your customer along with what your customers value. Channels, uh, if you're selling products or you're selling services, how do you reach your customers? That's what channels are. So whether or not you're gonna use social media, whether or not you're gonna sell online, or do you sell face-to-face? -face? Um, those are decisions that you need to make. On the cost side, you have labor costs, you have product cost. Um, so you want to determine who are your key partners, you know, who are your suppliers, who are your delivery uh, channels. Um, and then you want to identify your key activities. Are you going to build a product yourself? Are you going to have someone else build a product? Um, services, how are you going to deliver the service? And the key resources. So you want to have this sketch out to so have all this clearly identified. It doesn't have to be a 10 page report. It can be a simple one page canvas, but this has to be clearly articulated. Another um, very popular uh, business model nowadays is to conduct your business 100% online. So we're going to touch upon that a little bit. It has a it has slightly different uh, consideration than a brick and mortar business. So if you want to start your business online, your first decision is to choose a platform. This is similar to if you start a business in real life or brick and mortar. The first decision you have to make is the location where you're going to put your business. So uh, platform you want to uh, you want to choose platform based on how easy it is to use the platform because remember you are not a programmer you are a business owner do they provide help and support do they allow you to change the design and most importantly scalability if your business becomes successful will your platform be able to Catch, uh, to uh, grow along with your business. And then security. The last thing you want is your website to be hacked. And if that happens, you know, your business is basically shut down. So that is important. Um, do they provide marketing support? So those are, those are all important considerations when you choose a platform. A platform can be something as full, fully easy to use like Amazon or um, or you can be square um, and this type of, of platforms um, evolve over time. The other things that you also want to take into account is the competition. Amazon is a platform but Amazon is also a competitor. Um, and going along with platform is your marketing strategy. So how the, the internet is a huge space. How do you stand out? How do you attract customers? So in there, you need to be able to tell a really good story. And managing customer relationships, this is where the social media part comes in. You want to keep your customers engaged. Um, and unlike a brick and mortar business, um, you don't, um, customers don't walk by and come into your store. You have to have a way for them to find your product, find your service, and in order for you, them to become repeat customers, you have to keep them engaged. The last type of business we're gonna talk about is social venture. Social venture is a business that has an additional mission besides financial. So their focus will be on social value, which can be social justice or environment or humanitarian issues. But unlike a pure nonprofit, a social venture wants to be financially self-sustaining. So why are there, why, why is social venture necessary? The reason it is necessary is because if we have a completely free market, there are oftentimes deficiencies. Deficiencies when it comes to allocating resources. So this is where a, a unregulated free capitalist system is not sufficient. The reason they're not sufficient is because some goods are called public goods. Uh, an example is clean air. So everybody wants clean air, obviously, it's good. I can breathe and I'll have a better health outcome. 
However, if I, uh, no one wants to pay for it. So we can't really charge people for briefing. So that's why it's a public goods. It's good for everyone, but no one is going to pay for it. So we'll end up with, because no one is willing to pay for it, we will not have clean air. Um, something similar, we call it public harms. Think about it as traffic jam. No one likes traffic jams. However, if I choose to carpool and therefore they'll reduce traffic, the cost is on me and the benefit is on everyone else. So I bear all the cost and everyone shares in the benefit. So the benefit to me is small compared to the cost I have to pay myself. And so therefore very few people is willing to pay the cost. Very few people is willing to carpool to reduce traffic. And therefore, we all end up with traffic jams. So these are examples of public good and public harm. And again, the, the, the problem there is that the price and the cost um, is not well matched in a free market. So social venture oftentimes is developed to address this type of problems. So a social venture typically will measure not just the financial profit, but the social impact as well. And the goal is not always just to maximize profit, but rather to create the social impact at the same time being financially self-sustaining. Uh, benefit corporation that we talk about in chapter two and getting certification as a B Corp um, are examples of um, a social venture. Some, uh, a lot of social venture are certified as B Corp, but they are not required. So anybody can create a social venture and make that their, their primary focus, uh, meaning that in addition to um, generating profit, they also want to create social impact, but they do not have to become certified or be a benefit corporation. Okay. So the case for this chapter is going to be one that you will um, that will enable you to apply the tool of the um, business model canvas and also look at the different kinds of um, business um, model. Good luck, and I'll see you back here again soon.